Today, I will walk you through an example electronics interview problem. Spoiler alert, I was actually the interviewer that X this problem to his prospective candidate. I'd call the problem space difficulty medium, however, I did not even expect correct answers for the later part of the problem. For the later parts of the problem, I was more interested in the candidate's thought process rather than how well they did algebra under pressure. However, the circuit did come directly from a situation I encountered while working as a validation engineer, the role the interview was for. That being said, this video assumes a decent knowledge level. This is not a question I'd ask a first-time intern. In this video, I'll go over the full solution and key points I was looking for in the answer. Starting out by drawing the circuit, we have a multi-input, single-output system with three resistors, two capacitors, and a non-ideal op-amp. The first question I asked was, which input would you call the AC input, and which would you call the DC input? Feel free to pretend that you are answering the question here. The answer to this question lies in C1. In this topology, it is commonly referred to as an AC coupling capacitor. If V in 1 was a DC voltage source, it could never contribute to V out due to C1. Thus, V in 1 is the AC input, and V in 2 is the DC input. You can also argue that R3 and C2 form a low-pass filter, meaning high frequencies from V in 2 would be filtered out, but the low-frequency components would remain. The next question was, what do you think the circuit is for? This question is fairly open-ended, so I wouldn't penalize any conjectures. However, the main use of the circuit is to mix together an AC voltage with a DC voltage. That is, to superimpose an AC signal to ride onto a DC voltage. Some uses of this could be for an analog front end to a single supply ADC, or an active bias T. The actual use of this circuit was for PSRR testing, where a power supply was used for the DC input, and a function generator was used for an AC input. The function generator frequency was flipped, and the DUT was checked for correct operation under a range of noise frequencies and power levels. The op-amp had a large output drive current, so it could comfortably drive the power pin of the DUT. The next question is to identify which input the following transfer function plot corresponds to. In this case, there's primarily low-pass behavior, so this transfer function is V out over V into, aka the DC input. Next, I showed the AC transfer function and asked why the magnitude response rolls off at high frequency. If you're having trouble answering this, recall that the op-amp is not ideal. In this case, the high frequency roll-off is due to the finite gain bandwidth product of the op-amp. This prevents the circuit from operating at arbitrarily high frequencies. This is important to understand as it presents an operational limit to how high of a frequency you can test the PSRR with. The next question is to derive the transfer function of the AC input, VN1, assuming that the op-amp is now ideal. This is a bit tricky, but there are multiple levels of response. A good first step is to do a hand-wavy argument that at DC, capacitors have infinite impedance, aka look like open circuits, and at high frequencies, capacitors have low impedance, aka look like short circuits. With this argument, you can say that at low frequency, the transfer function is zero, and at high frequency, it is non-zero. So whatever transfer function we get, it better follow that form. For actually calculating the transfer function, we can recognize the circuit as an inverting amplifier and solve accordingly. Fact-checking our equation, at dc, s equals zero, the numerator is zero, meaning that there is no output. And at high frequency, s approaches infinity, we have a constant gain of negative r2 over r1, which is the standard inverting amplifier gain. Now, if the candidate has answered everything correctly, I have one last question to test their knowledge, which is to find the transfer function of the DC input VN2. This is especially tough, so again, I don't penalize any answers. What I was looking for is the thought process and how the candidate checks their work. Here, I speed through the equations, but eventually come to a closed form solution. 
Again, we can check our work by setting s to 0 and have s approach infinity and see how the transfer function agrees or disagrees with our intuition. In this case, when s equals 0 or at dc, the transfer function is simply b in 2. And as s approaches infinity, we have a gain of 0. Eventually, we can use superposition to combine the two transfer functions, and we are left with the following equation. If we were to further simplify by setting s to 0 in the v in 2 transfer function and s to infinity in the v in 1 transfer function, we are left with the simple equation of v out equals v in 2 minus v in 1 times r2 over r1. Let me know your thoughts on this interview question. Thank mm -hmm. you.